Hello everyone, Jinjinx here, one of the Monster Hunter Math Guys. Now before we even get into anything, obviously this is going to contain spoilers because it's going to be talking about a later in the game monster. Alright, we good? Y'all cool with spoilerinos? Cool. So, if you saw our previous video where you talk about the best set you can use post-story until you hit MR70, you probably want a Shara Ishvaldo weapon. Especially if you play Hammer because then you get to kill the monster with headpats. Yeah, headpats. However, if you are trying to get a Shara Ishvada weapon, you are probably struggling to get both tender plates and gems. Now, if you break the head once, you actually do have a chance to get these, but it's a very low chance. However, what you may not know is that there is something you can do every single Shara Ishvada hunt that guarantees you will get one of these two not once, but twice. That's right, two either tender plates or gems every single hunt. Now, we don't know exact figures, but from all of the many Shara hunts I've done so far, it feels like a tender plate's around a 1 in 4 to 1 in 5 chance of dropping from just a regular head break. This means getting two guaranteed plates per run is around 8 to 10, if not more, times more efficient, and that's not even accounting for the fact that you have to get more quests. But before we get too deep into explaining this and how to do it, very quickly, just want to remind you, we do have a Twitter where he posts updates about videos and things that interest us, and Tuna does have a Twitch where he streams almost every day. Now, normally, even though there may be a low chance for you to get a rare monster ingredient, you can normally get them fairly easily just by brute forcing your way through. If you keep on killing the monsters over and over and over and over again, eventually you will get that rare mantle or rare gem you need. However, with Shara, that doesn't really work well. Shara's quests work just like they do with both Zora and Xenojiva in the base game, meaning they have a very low chance to spawn after you complete a quest, and then they only stick around for two quests. So if you do not manage to get the materials you need in those two quests, you could be waiting 10, 20, 30 more hunts until you get a chance to do it again. This is why I want to stress this is not a strategy for getting quick clears on Shara. Yes, it is very easy to get consistent 10 minute clears on Shara Ishvalda, but that does not matter unless you're getting the materials you need from Shara while you have those limited two hunts. But how do we guarantee that we do get both tender plates and gems from Shara? Well, we do that by focusing on one and only one thing, which is breaking Shara's head twice. Now, a lot of you may not even know that you can break Shara's head twice. Personally, I didn't even realize it was a thing until I checked the hunter's notes and noticed that it said there was a head broken rewards and a scalped carved rewards. Basically, after you break the head the first time, if you deal enough damage to the head before she dies, a chunk of her scalp flies off. This can be carved twice, and each carve is guaranteed to either be a tender plate or a gem. So easy peasy, just focus the head, right? Well, there are some problems that can actually make it very difficult, if not impossible, for you to break the scalp off in time before she dies. I also want to be clear, all the strategies in this video do assume that you are either running your own quest or your friend's quest. With SOS randos, it's pretty much impossible to break the scalp off unless you get really lucky and everyone else is also focusing their head. It's just got too much HP. There is a particular strategy you can do in SOS quest that does increase the chance of managing to get a scalp break, but we'll cover that in a bit. So first off, let's just talk about our failure points. Now, the chance of getting either a gem or a tender plate from rewards is so, so small, you really do have to get the scalp broken off to be able to efficiently farm Shara weapons. So for these farming runs, you can pretty much consider there to be two separate failure points. A is the obvious one, you triple cart out of the quest. B is simply completing the quest by killing her, but not breaking the scalp off in time. If you don't get the scalp calves, the chance of you getting a tender plate and gem are so low, you've basically just wasted 10 to 20 minutes. Not to mention wasting one of your two chances to farm her. Now for not cutting out, there's really not too much to talk about on the subject. Shara's attacks are fairly slow and have very, very obvious windups and hitboxes, so for the most part they're not too hard to avoid. But that being said, the most likely way you will die is either from getting stunned and wombo comboed, or getting wombo comboed by ground explosions and Shara's attacks. 
if you struggle to dodge Shara's moveset, we recommend bringing Health Boost 3 and Stun Resistance 3. Stun Resistance 3 is nice because if you get hit by about 3 or so attacks in about a 15, maybe 20 second window, you generally get stunned and that will often lead to a card. And if you're not confident in your ability to dodge her attacks, then just grab a Fortify as well. Also, I heavily, heavily recommend not running Rocksteady. Shara has quite a few multi-hit moves that will one-shot you if you're wearing Rocksteady. Really, the only move of Shara's that's hard to dodge if you don't know how to do so is her Spirit Bomb attack. But it only has a limited range, so if you hug the wall, it'll pretty much miss you every time. Now let's talk about the more important part, how to not kill her before the scout breaks off. So let's talk about why this is difficult. I do actually have rough damage counts on how much damage it takes to break the scout off, as well as how much HP Shara has in Area 2. A huge thanks to our friend Aradi for recording a Rapid Fire Sticky 2 run for us. Stickies deal fixed damage, making it relatively easy to damage count based off of this run. Based off of my counts, the head HP lies somewhere around 8350, and then the total HP lies somewhere around 17,000. Keep in mind this is not necessarily 100% accurate because I cannot be 100% certain all of these stickies that land on the head did land on the head as I counted. And in this particular run, Arati did have a Palico with a Master Rank weapon, meaning the Palico was dealing damage the entire run. But either way, based off of this, we can see that the head HP is somewhere around 50% of her max HP. Quick side note, the strategy I spoke earlier that works better in SOS is going to be running Libogum with either Rapid Fire Sticky 2 or with Sticky 3s. The reason why this works uniquely well on SOS is that in order to hit that 50% head damage threshold in multiplayer with randoms, you have to somehow convince them to attack the head. And maybe it's just a quirk of human psychology, but literally every hunter I've ever seen see a shower fall over instantly runs to the head and beats on it. With Artillery 5, Slugger 3, as well as a Power Barrel, you should be able to get 3 to 4 KOs in a multiplayer environment. Combine that with Wyvern Blasts as well as Flinch Free, so you can actually plant them in front of your teammates, and hopefully that will actually be enough to get the randoms to beat the head enough to break the scout. Hopefully. It's definitely a better option than trying to break it by yourself. For higher deeps, you want to run special ammo boost instead of health boost, but health boost is nice to make sure you don't get wamboed. For sticky 3, you can run either the Garuga or the Nagakuga light bow gun. Both of these run two recoil mods as well as two sliding reload mods. Anyway, let's get back to talking about how Shara's scout break HP is 50% of her max HP. Now this doesn't seem that bad, but also keep in mind Aradi's run was 30 minutes long and spent 8 minutes in Area 2. A 20 minute run will have twice that amount of time for the Palico to be dealing damage. On longer 20 minute runs, it can feel more like the scalp breaks at 70 or 80% of total max health because the Palicos deal a lot more damage than you might think over long hunts. I have had Switch Axe runs where I have exclusively Power Axe Clutch Claw attacked the head to break the scalp off and only ever hit her arms to re-up my Power Axe. In all three of the runs where I did this, she died 1000 damage or so after I broke the scalp. That's how tight the window becomes to get the head break if you are not focusing the head exclusively. Now the Power X combos I did land on the arms did around 650-700 damage or so. But also Power X has a very hefty part break and trip modifier on it. In other words, Axe attacks of Power X break parts faster. And I used exclusively Axe Clutch Claw hits to the head with Power X on most of them. Keep in mind these were testing runs without Part Breaker 3, I only used the Part Break modifier coming from Power Axe and Switch Axe. So yes, run Part Breaker 3 because it does make this window a lot less tight. With Part Breaker 3, you only need about 6400 damage in solo to get the Scout Break. If your intention is to get a Scout Break, which it always should be if you're farming Shara parts, then be sure to never leave camp without Part Breaker 3. And of course, you want to focus your damage exclusively on the head. Any point of damage you put on any other body part makes that window smaller and smaller, and makes it more and more likely that she will die before you can break off the scalp and you will have wasted your time. So yes, this means please, for the love of god, do not use poison. Poison is amazing for speed clearing Shara because of how much damage it does. 
but because none of this damage is applied to the head break, all you are doing is making it less likely you'll break the head in time. If your intention is to farm up tender plates and gems, it is the definition of counterproductive. So that means no poison ammo leaving area 1, no poison ammo in area 2, no poison weapons when fighting Shara, no poison weapons on your Palico or your teammates, just please do not use poison. We're trying to go for 100% certainty that we will get a scalp carve, and poison reduces those chances. Now another thing is you may want to consider not bringing a Palico, but bringing a Palico does have its advantages. As I stated earlier, the Palico can make the window tighter and tighter over time because it'll continually chip away at Shara's health without dealing head damage. However, if you have a world leveled up plunder blade, you can get quite a few free parts from Shara, which is valuable considering you only get two of these hunts at a time. If you are bringing a Palico, then make sure they use a Paralysis weapon. Personally, I would actually recommend having the Palico use a higher rank, not a master rank Paralysis weapon. The reason for this is because in both of my runs either using the high rank or master rank Paralysis weapon, I still only ever got one Paralysis coming from my Palico the whole hunt. But master rank Palico weapons deal more damage, which means we're making our window tighter again because the Palico is not going to be dealing that damage to the head. Now, because we do want to focus damage exclusively on the head to maximize our chances of getting a scalp, please do not hit the arms trying to get the trip. In the Switch Axe runs where I did focus the head primarily, hit the arms when I had a chance to, and got two trips and got a beat on the head, I did four runs and it was a 50-50 shot whether I actually broke the scalp in time. See, the problem is, is that the window is so tight and the damage needed to trip from arms is so high, it ends up being very, very close whether you can actually break the scalp off if you go for trips. It's entirely possible to get a scalp break if you play for trips, it's just not consistent, and since we only get two Sharas per rotation, we want consistency. Now, if you're using a weapon like Greatsword, which has insanely high pop break modifiers on level 3 TCS, you only need a few level 3 TCSs on the head to actually manage to break the scalp off. Unfortunately, we do not know what the values are yet, and we do know it was nerfed in Iceborne, but it used to be a 1.7 times modifier. In other words, a 1000 damage TCS would deal 1700 damage to pop breaks. And yes, that's multiplied by pop breaker. But for us other pleb weapons that do not have any pop break modifiers, this is not the case. Playing for trips by beating on the arms just increases the chance that you will accidentally kill her before breaking the head off. However, once you have managed to break the scalp, you can definitely play for trips then just to speed up the rest of the hunt. But before the scalp break, if you're using a melee weapon, your best shot is to just constantly focus on clutch claw attacks on the head every opening you get. This will admittedly be quite a bit slower, but it is worth it to guarantee that you do get those tender plates and gems. In particular, Hammer is very nice for this because Hammer will deal KO damage while doing clutch claw attacks on the head. And then when you do KO her, you can go get big bangs off on the head and it's just a nice little extra damage output to speed things up. Switch Axe is also good because Power Axe does increase your pop break modifier on your clutch claw axe attacks. Just do not land the Power Axe attacks on the arms, legs, or any other part of the body because you will be lowering the chance you actually manage to break the head off in time. Now, this all being said, the absolute best way to consistently break the head and fast is to just use a ranged weapon. Personally, I like using Spread 3 Light Bow Gun, but Spread 2 Rapid Fire Light Bow Gun and 2 Rapid Fire Light Bow Gun all work very well as well. And of course, if you have the Zenogre Heavy Bowgun, which is basically the new Glutton, that will completely melt her face. But you do have to be more used to dodging her attacks because you'll be using Heavy Bowgun. Now, an option that is really good in a team and that one of our friends Tony is very much a fan of using is going to be using Rapid Fire Sticky 2 with Rapid Fire Pierce 2 on the Garuga Light Bowgun. Now, the Pierce 2 doesn't deal that much head damage and you kind of have to angle it cleverly so you don't accidentally pierce through the wings on the body and neck. But it is very easy for the Garuga Light Bowgun to get several KOs out on Shara. Now let's say you combine that with three great swords, all hitting a softened head with level 3 TCS and pop break a 3, that plate will probably break off in like one or two KOs. As for builds, I'll be completely honest, I haven't really gone around to optimizing much of any builds right now. 
All of the bow gun builds I'm using at the moment come from our friend Fermetto, and I just modified them to fit in Part Breaker 3. So I would recommend checking out his channel. He has several videos covering different builds at different points in the game. He is the go-to source for information about gunners and bow. Link to his channel in the description and top right. Okay, next thing is you can definitely knock her into walls, but do not knock her into the rock drops. The area 2 rock drops do deal several thousand damage, but they fall so slowly you cannot guarantee they're going to land on the head, she'll sometimes turn out of the way in time. If you land at several thousand damage on the wings or body or tail or whatever else, then you are going to have a very hard time breaking the scalp off before she dies. But yeah, that's pretty much it for making sure you get the scalp break in time. If you focus the head exclusively with damage, run part breaker 3 and then do not use poison, rock drops or other things to deplete her health pool, you will be able to get a scalp break 100% of the time. Now the runs do take a little bit longer doing this, my ranged runs tend to run about 13 to 15 minutes and my melee runs run about 18 to 20 minutes. If I focus only on killing her as fast as possible, I generally get her in about 10 minutes. But that 5 to 10 extra minutes is very well worth guaranteeing you get at least 2 tender plates or gems. You only get 2 chances to farm her before waiting for the next RNG round to come around. Probably want to make them count. Now I know I did not really touch on Area 1, so let's just briefly cover some stuff about it. Area 1 isn't super important or super difficult, just make sure you bring a far caster, and I personally recommend using either Pierce Heavy Bowgun or Pierce Light Bowgun. Pierce Heavy Bowgun is significantly better, but you might not be comfortable dodging the attacks with a Heavy Bowgun. Soften up Shara's head and just pew pew right through. Realistically, anything works here, just beat on Shara until the rocks fall off and make sure to slinger burst them into the rock fall for a few thousand damage. Pierce Heavy Bowgun will get this area done in about 2 minutes or so, but whether you actually want to invest in a Pierce Heavy Bowgun just for this or not is kind of up to you. I honestly have zero idea if Pop Breaker affects how quickly you release Shara in this phase. However, just in case it does, I run it on the set. Again, I haven't bothered optimizing this set yet, so there's probably some more skills I could squeeze, but it does the job. As for the mods, you want to make sure you're running a power barrel along with one recoil, and then you can fill out the rest with ranged attack and put a special scope in there if you want to be fancy. Due to the way the super crit distance on special scope works, I'm pretty sure it's terrible on Pierce. I was just running it during my runs to test out the mechanics. Ideal loadout is most likely just three range attack ups. Either way, as long as you knock Shara into the wall and are spamming PS3, you're gonna finish this in 2-3 minutes. Alright, following the advice in this video, you will be able to 100% guarantee that you get the scalp calves, which give you two tender plates or gems every single Shara Ishvalda run. You know, assuming you don't derp out and card. Womp womp. Either way, thank you so much for checking out the video. We really hope that this will help you get those tender plates and gems you need so you can start head patting all of the monsters. If you have friends who are also struggling to get the Shara Isvaldo weapons made, be sure to share the video with them. And if you enjoyed the video and learned something new, be sure to like the video and let us know in a comment below if we missed any interesting tips or strategies for Shara. Thank you as always to Honey over at HoneyHunterWorld.com for creating and maintaining the tools we use to make sets with. She is hard at work getting all the databases updated for Iceborne. And of course a huge thank you to our friend Fermetto. Again, he is the go-to source for bowgun and bow information and his builds were the ones that I based all of my bowgun builds off of. Link to his channel in the top right and description, please be sure to go check him out if you want to learn anything related to bows or bowguns. And we do also have a discord server, the Mathalos Nest, where you can come hang out with us, hang out with our regulars, and come chat about Iceborne or even just Space Monster Hunter World. And of course we also have a Twitter where we post updates about videos and just general things that interest us, and Tuna does stream almost every day live on Twitch. He will be live as soon as this video goes out, so be sure to check him out. And none of this will be possible without the generosity of our patrons. No new patrons today, but thank you all so much regardless for all the support you have shown us. It really has carried us to where we are today and we could not be more thankful. Alright, that's all I have for you on this one. We have plenty more Iceborne content on the way for you. And tonight I'm planning on streaming here on YouTube some different numbers tests on different values on the game. That's right, we're getting real mathy up in here. Oh yeah.
So if you'd like to see those as soon as that comes out and be notified when I go on stream, be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so it will let you know as soon as those things happen. YouTube does this thing where you have to hit the notification bell to be notified because subscribe basically just means, hey, recommend videos like this to me. Alright, have a good one. We'll see you guys tonight. Happy hunting hunters. Bye.